Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, last week I compared the five-year-old Ryzen 5 1600 to the new Ryzen 5 5600 on an old B350 motherboard to see just how much of an upgrade the Zen 3 processor is. And spoiler, it is a massive upgrade that's well worth it for anyone who jumped on the AM4 platform early. A no-brainer really, I'd say, with the 5600 now down around $175 US. But what if you have the Ryzen 5 3600? Now, this is a question many of you asked me after watching that video. And with so many requests, I went back to the test bench and got to it. So for those of you that missed the previous video, that means we've got another 25 game benchmark, including 1080p and 1440p data using both the Radeon RX 6950 XT and 6600 XT with SAM enabled. Today's video sponsor spot is brought to you by Team Group and their Evolving Invincibility Digital Expo, which gives you the chance to win some great T-Force products for gamers, such as a Vulcan DDR5 5200 32GB memory kit, Delta RGB DDR5 6400 32GB memory kit, or a Siren DG360 all-in-one ARGB CPU liquid cooler. To enter, simply fill out a short questionnaire and you're in with a chance to win some great prizes. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Now the motherboard used for testing is the old MSI B350 Tomahawk using the latest BIOS revision based on the AGISA 1.2.0.7 microcode which enables resizable BIOS support along with support for Ryzen 5000 series processors. Then we have 32GB of DDR4 3200CL14 dual rank dual channel memory and this same configuration was used for testing all Ryzen processors. So with all of those details out of the way, let's go over about a dozen of the games tested and then we'll take a look at the 25 game average, but please note all 25 graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Fortnite, we see that although the Ryzen 5 3600 is plenty fast, the 5600 is still much faster, boosting performance with the 6950 XT at 1080p by a whopping 56%. Then even with the 6600 XT, the 5600 was 47% faster than the 1600 at 1080p, though that margin was reduced to 16% at 1440p. Still, for Fortnite players, it looks like Zen 2 is still fast enough, pushing frame rates well over 250 FPS on average in our test, with 1% lows of over 160 FPS. Next up we have ACC, and here the 3600 performs really well, boosting average frame rate performance over the original 1600 by up to 52%. Moreover, it was just 15% slower than the 5600 when paired with the 6950 XT at 1080p. So big gains for Zen 2 over Zen here, while Zen 3 was only up to 18% faster, which admittedly is still a very reasonable performance advantage, but might not warrant the $175 investment in the 5600. The 3600 performed even better on Cyberpunk 2077 relative to the 5600, typically trailing by just a 7% margin. That meant it was significantly faster than the 1600 when more CPU limited with a powerful GPU such as the 6950 XT. So another impressive result that shouldn't see 3600 owners in need of a 5600 upgrade. Now as we previously found when testing Dying Light 2, this isn't a heavy CPU user, and as a result even the Ryzen 5 1600 does well here. That said, the 3600 was better when paired with the high-end GPUs as it was able to match the 5600 at both 1440p and 1080p using the 6950XT. Moving on, we have F1 2021, and this is a game that despite running at much lower frame rates with the Ryzen 5 1600, it was still very playable with over 100 FPS at all times. So that being the case, 3600 owners who predominantly play F1 2021 won't feel the need to upgrade given performance here has been boosted by up to 37% over the 1600. So the fact that it's still 32% slower than the 5600 is really of no consequence here given we're talking about average frame rates in excess of 200 FPS. The Far Cry 6 results are very interesting as they become GPU bound quite quickly using the high quality preset, yet there's no performance difference between the 3600 and 5600, which is odd, but the performance of Far Cry games has always been a bit strange as they don't really utilize CPUs very well. But when compared to the 1600, that does mean the 3600 is up to 57% faster, so a massive improvement here. The Forza Horizon 5 results are more typical. Using the 6950 XT at 1080p, the 3600 was 46% faster than the 1600, and 16% slower than the 5600. And that margin is then reduced to just 11% at 1440p, and although that still makes the 5600 a good bit faster, 
the 3600 is still averaging over 200 FPS, so I'd say it's plenty fast here. Then with the 6600 XT, the 3600 and 5600 are evenly matched due to the GPU limitation. Though at 1080p, the 3600 was still 26% faster than the 1600. So for those of you wanting to push over 144 FPS, the 3600 is more than capable of this in Forza Horizon 5. Moving on to Hitman 3, and here we find that the 3600 is able to match the 5600 for the most part, with the only exception being the 1080p data with the 6950 XT, where the new Zen 3 CPU was 13% faster. So for most playing Hitman 3, the performance difference between the 3600 and 5600 will be very minimal, but from the 1600 to the 3600, well, that is a huge upgrade, netting players up to 53% more performance. The Rift Breaker was a game that really broke the Ryzen 5 1600, leading to very stuttery gameplay that wasn't at all enjoyable. The Ryzen 5 3600 though is a big step up with far fewer frame pacing issues, though it has to be said that the 36% improvement in 1% low performance that you receive from the 5600, that'll be noticeable here. The Zen 3 part delivered perfectly smooth performance, so this is an example in my opinion of where the upgrade from the 3600 to the 5600 would be worth it. Next we have Rainbow Six Extraction, and here the Ryzen 5 1600 had no issue providing smooth playable performance with at least 170 FPS on average when paired with a high-end GPU. So needless to say, the 3600 was fine here, generally matching the 5600, and the biggest margin was seen at 1080p with the 6950 XT, here the Zen 2 part was just 8% slower. So there's really no need to upgrade from the 3600 to the 5600 for this title. And the last game that we're going to look at the individual results for is Watch Dogs Legion, and this is a very CPU demanding game that did tend to overwhelm the Ryzen 5 1600. The 3600 though, that had no issues keeping frame rates above 60 FPS where performance is CPU limited, and was never more than 12% slower than the 5600. Okay, so here's a look at the 25 game average. Using a high-end GPU, such as the 6950 XT at a low resolution, so 1080p, the Ryzen 5 3600 was on average 43% faster than the 1600, which is a massive performance uplift. The 5600 though was just 19% faster than the 3600, and while that is a big performance improvement, we often found little to no difference between the two, as even here, some of the games were GPU limited using dialed down quality settings. Still, I'm sure many of you could easily justify a CPU upgrade for on average 19% more performance, especially given that we saw multiple years of new CPU generations that led to maybe a 5% performance increase. Now, for those of you gaming with a slower GPU, something like the 6600 XT, the Ryzen 5 3600 was on average 23% faster than the 1600 at 1080p, while the 5600 was 14% faster than the 3600. Then at 1440p, we're looking at single digit margins as performance was generally quite heavily GPU limited. Now, here's a look at the 1% low margins seen across all 25 games when comparing the 5600 to the 3600 with the 6950 XT at 1080p. On average, the 5600 was just 17% faster, though we did find seven instances where the margin exceeded 20%, with gains as high as 59% seen in Fortnite. Basically, for those of you playing competitive multiplayer games, the upgrade to the 5600 from the 3600 will probably be worth it. But for those of you playing single player titles such as Far Cry 6 and Dying Light 2 for example, it'll probably make sense to stick with the 3600. Now, when using the 6600 XT, again at 1080p, we find that the margins for the 1% lows are reduced further, and now the 5600 was on average just 12% faster than the 3600. Again, titles such as Fortnite using competitive quality settings will still greatly benefit from the faster CPU, but around half of the games tested saw little to no performance improvement. So again, it really does come down to the games you play, and probably more importantly, how you play them, as to whether or not the 5600 upgrade will be worth it. So, no real surprises here based on what we've seen from previous testing, but it was still cool to compare the Ryzen 5 5600 on an old B350 motherboard with the 1600 and 3600. It's pretty clear to me that anyone running a Zen or Zen Plus processor on an old 300 series motherboard should look at snagging a new affordable Ryzen 5 5600 or Ryzen 7 5700X processor. 
But for Zen 2 owners running something like the Ryzen 5 3600, it is less obvious what you should do. And in many instances, the upgrade for the 5600 just really isn't worth it. But again, that will depend on the games you're playing and how you play them. So that'll be for you to work out. But assuming your games are often heavily CPU limited, then the upgrade to the 5600 will deliver big performance gains. And if you're looking to boost performance outside of just gaming, then the Ryzen 7 5700X for just $300 US is a great way to do that. Otherwise, for truly massive performance improvements in games, you'd be looking more at the 5800X 3D. At the time of making this video, it is available at the $450 US MSRP, but that is a serious investment, especially for those of you using older motherboards. Granted, it does work well and I have already tested it, but I feel at this point you probably are best off waiting for AM5 to arrive and then assess your options there. And that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully the Ryzen 5 3600 owners in the audience who requested this content are satisfied. And of course, if you are, please do hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you are because we have many more Benchmark videos coming. Also, if you would like to become a Harbor Unbox community member, then we do have Floatplane or Patreon. Links for either of those are in the video description. You get access to our Discord server, our monthly live streams with Tim and myself, Q and A's and behind the scenes content. So yeah, if you're interested, check that stuff out, but if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.